Thanks for joining us. We just wanted to provide the following disclaimer. Many of our episodes were recorded prior to the start of the Screen Actors Guild and Writers Guild's ongoing labor dispute. We wanted to warn you, as there is a ban on promoting projects in podcasts currently for any striking actors. We totally support the ongoing labor action and both the Writers Guild and the Screen Actors Guild in their dispute. We just wanted to make this clear. And once we have moved past those pre-recorded episodes, we will no longer continue to discuss ongoing or upcoming projects. Thank you for your time, and please enjoy the show. Is it a sandwich? Oh, is it a sandwich? If I called a hot dog a sandwich, do you think that you'd be fine with it? If not, then why? Let's bust this wide. Mary, Carrie, Kelly, Matt, oh my, is a sandwich? Well, let's decide. Johnny played guitar, Jenny played bass. <laughs> Name of the band is the human race. Everybody tell me, have you heard? Pop goes the world. <laughs> oh. <laughs> On I didn't know where it was Yay. going. <laughs> the fact Yay. that you can do that with your mouth, Matt, is amazing. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can't do that. I practiced for years. <laughs> like this song is like, how do I like, and it's still at like a 70, 30 chance that it's not going to happen. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. Funny. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode two of season five of Order Up, where so far, uh, <laughs> Team Pop is in the lead. JP, JP voted Pop. Uh, we're going to see how this goes. I I don't know. I'm not sure what the people are going to say, but Mary <laughs> listeners is shaking her head with just no, not going to let it. No. Okay. Mary's going to do all she can. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's part of my heritage. So That's okay. I'm, I'm wondering uh, how often we have heard the term soft drink. Oh. Is yeah. that? I don't think anybody ever really uses that. Like, that's like a formal address. It's it's like in a form. You know what? You're right. Like when I go to, I'm not really a drinker, an alcohol drinker. So when I go to like a wedding or like a fancy schmancy, even a restaurant where all my friends and partner are ordering wine or something, I usually say something like, I think I'll just get a soft drink. Like, and then I'll order the the specific thing that I want. And I do that at a bar as well. Like, do you just have soft drinks here, please? Like, but you're right at a, at like McDonald's or something. I would never call it a soft drink. Yeah. Well, and it's really not a soft drink. I mean, if you, the first time that my kids had soda, mm. like it looked like they both ate lemons because of the carbonation. <laughs> so it's not That's a soft true. drink. It's, it's more like, um, I would say a surprising drink. Mm-hmm. My you kids know, call it, it spicy. Yeah, like that's, spicy, exactly. like the bubbles. I've heard lots yeah. of little kids say it's spicy because that's how it feels on your tongue that the bubbles are. Yeah. Now, I mean, the origins of that is sort of like um, sweet milk and sour milk. It's just a descriptor. Um, it's like sweet milk. People think, you know, sweet milk. No, sweet milk just means milk that's not spoiled. It's just from a time oh. when you had you still used spoiled milk oh. in like the 17, 1800s. Oh. So that's where sweet milk and sour milk comes from. Um, but soft drink is a counterpoint to a hard drink. Right. So it's a prohibition kind of style era mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like, you know, a soft drink is non-alcoholic. A hard drink mm-hmm. can, can get you drunk. Get you arrested. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, arrested, <laughs> yes. But would you well, belly up to the bar, Matt, and go, I'd like a hard drink? Yeah, I, you know, I want a Shirley <laughs> Temple, please. <laughs> I'm looking for a hard drink. I mean, it feels a little <laughs> aggressive. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm soon to be 46, and I can still, I, I don't have the ability to order a Shirley Temple without smiling and giggling. As she did. <laughs> 
I think there's a dearth of mocktails in this world. Yes, though. I there's, agree with you. you know, I like, really I want wish. a fancy drink, but I yeah. don't want it to be alcoholic. I agree with you. I think especially now when we're supposed to be not shaming anybody about if they don't drink, you don't want to, like you're not supposed to ask people, why aren't you drinking? Like for me, it's just that I don't enjoy it. I don't like the taste, Mm. but there's really, aside from like a Coke or a a ginger ale or something, there's not a lot of options for me. So you're right. A fancy drink would be fun. Well, if you want to appear like you're part of the gang, Uh here's, here's a Kennedy giving you a trick. Mm. So you go to the bar and you say, I would like a cranberry and seltzer. I don't yes. know if you guys say seltzer in Canada. Seltzer with a twist of lime and everybody will think you're having a Cape Cod. So the funny thing is, and it just occurred to me now, Mary Kennedy, is that I have ordered that and I will say cranberry and soda, but I would never normally say soda if I'm talking about pop. But I, I do say I, cranberry I, soda. You too, yeah. Kelly? Interesting. Yeah, interesting. I've never said a cranberry pop. No. No. Oh, that's interesting. I'm just shortening the, the term club soda. Yes, me too. I wouldn't say club pop, although that would be a fun club to go to. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all too old for club pop. Yeah. yeah. Club pop a hip. Club. Oh, my. Okay. Oh, my God. But I was at a club recently in New York. Uh, a club I will call a sexy times club. Ooh, they were there was sexy things happening there, uh, but not stripping, friends. None of Mm-mm. that. I wasn't there. But I ordered uh, a cocktail because I'm not a big drinker, and it looked like it had some lighter alcoholic things in the drink. That clobbered me over the head with one sip, <laughs> and I was like, I can't, I, I can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just, yeah, I can't tolerate it anymore. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. kind of wacky. But you know what I can tolerate, friends? Good mm. facts. I do enjoy oh. the fact. Uh, Matt, what do you have for us for episode two? Well, a very good transition from Mary's soda fact. Um, so when people think of soda, they think of artificial drinks. But soda is actually a naturally occurring fluid. Uh, I mean, there's no such thing as a cola geyser, uh, but <laughs> soda... <laughs> It's soda, and that that would be my idea of heaven. Um, Heather's mm-hmm. idea of heaven is a chocolate waterfall. Mine is a soda Ooh. geyser. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> soda comes from a naturally uh, from the term uh, sodium water, uh, a naturally carbonated water, usually oh. quite high in sodium. Uh, it was shortened to soda water when we figured out how to make our own artificial soda water, and the name stuck. Mm-hmm. Now, there are all sorts of sodas from all around the world, like Scotland's Iron Brew, lava drinks from India, and Algeria's Hamad Bolem. Um, one of the international brands is Fanta, a delicious orange drink that see- is seeing a resurgence in North America. Um, created in Germany like Volkswagen and Hugo Boss, <laughs> is tied to one of the darkest moments in history. Um, now, Coca-Cola was a huge hit in the German market, but when World War II set in, it became increasingly difficult for the Coca-Cola bottling plants to find resources needed. And when the trade embargoes finally set in, they found they needed to create their own soda to boost national morale. Uh, Max Keith looked at what produce was available uh, and mixing whey and apple fiber with whatever seasonal fruit they could find. They created Mm -hmm. a ginger ale like drink, uh, which Max called Fanta, an abbreviation for the German word fantasy, uh, meaning what it means in English fantasy um, and giving the surrounding circumstances, a very chilling origin to something people now enjoy. Um, Yeah. So when you have that, when you order a Fanta, just, just, Remember those origins because it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't wear Hugo Boss for a reason either. Mm. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah. Didn't know about that. Interesting. I did not know that either. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, now Fanta, though, they really only do the Fanta orange. I don't see a lot Isn't of Isn't there grape? T- there's great. There's a lot of flavors outside of America. They only uh, do the orange in America. But there's a whole like Canada has a bunch of flavors. Um, wow. The and the, the UK and Europe they have even more. 
that's so backwards for us. <laughs> it's a Euro- yeah, it's the European brand. That's the thing. It's a oh, European okay. brand being rebrought into North America as opposed to the other way around. Yeah. So it's like, okay, where do we have gaps? And they're like, okay, well, you know, our orange soda is going down. Let's try. Folks like, well, we got this other brand of orange soda. Let's try bringing that back in. That's crazy. That is crazy. Hmm. Oh, wow. Well, are we ready to get started? Woo-hoo, See what yeah. today's interview will say if they're going to go soda or pop. Or maybe soda pop. Ooh, it's two of season five of Order of Act. Okay, hey Matt, who's our guest today? Today's guest is an amazing comedian. I've had the pleasure of seeing perform and sharing the stage with. Born in Sierra Leone and adopted by parents who raised him in a small community in the Yukon, he's a multi-talented force of comedy: an actor, a break dancer, a cook, and as funny as heck comedian. He's hosted Underground Comedy Railroad for Comedy Records and has his own podcast, In the Car and In the Kitchen, which examines CBC Radio's canceled shows. Please welcome George Rivard. Yay! Yay! (laughs) That is a really amazing intro. Thank you. That was nice. You're welcome. We will package it up for you and you can give it to family members uh, to play when you enter. (laughs) I need it read before I enter every room, like in Downton Abbey when they announce people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we are so happy to have you here. So before we get uh, to the reason you're here, we have five very difficult questions for you, George. Um, first off, apropos of nothing, I just ran out of the habanero chutney uh, you made. I would like some more, uh, but we can talk later <laughs> about getting me more of that. Um, but let's get to the reason you're here, as I say. Mary, five questions for George, please. <laughs> yes. Here are your questions, George. What was your favorite beverage as a kid? Okay, my favorite beverage as a kid. Okay, uh, there's two types. Because one was before I knew what pop tasted like, and one was after. <laughs> so my favorite beverage... As a kid, my mom used to give us, she has this juicer and she would give us carrot juice. So that was my favorite oh. beverage as a kid. Because when you don't know what, everything's relative, right? So mm-hmm. if it's the sweetest thing you've ever tasted, you can get kids to do anything for carrot juice. So if we were good. <laughs> we were good <laughs> and, and then I had what was a very sweet pop at the time, which isn't even pop now, considered it was like a spritzer which is just like oh. orange juice with just like a, like a, it would be like soda water with a whisper of orange juice. Uh, yeah, but it was carrot juice as a kid. That was my favorite beverage. And I had so I many like carrots that, that my palms, <laughs> I do too. The palms of my hands and the bottoms of my feet turned orange. Like it happened. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Seriously? Yeah, it does. Cause of the carrot. Yeah. Oh my God. And you, so you were having non-alcoholic mimosas as a child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Well, this this brings me to my question. What drink reminds you of your parents? Uh, what drink reminds me of my mom would be just President's Choice sparkling water. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> yes, it, and it had this, like, picture of a waterfall on it. You just drink that. And what drink <laughs> reminds me of my dad would be he still drinks carrot juice. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, I come from a healthy family. Yes. <laughs> he has that that or that you know that Santa Cruz uh cranberry juice where it's just cranberries yeah. and tastes disgusting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That. Oh, wow. <laughs> They are really. That's healthy. very healthy. That's yes. kind of bitter. Cranberry, pure cranberry is kind of bitter, no? Yeah, it's a bitter bog berry. No. <laughs> bitter bog. <laughs> <laughs> um, so coffee or tea or neither? Coffee. Yay. Mm. Yay. Good, good, good. And do you, I do think you like it black just... or cream and sugar? Oh, it depends. I like, so I go start, start off my day like this. I start off my day with an AeroPress coffee in my house, and then I go and get 
a black eye coffee, which is a coffee with two double shots of espresso. Oh, and oh then, God. and then after that, I might have a coffee in the afternoon, but then I come home from work and I have a cortado. And maybe if it's a long night and I'm doing stand up, I'll have another espresso. Oh, wow. How do you sleep? Do you sleep? Do you, then do you take yes. two Ambien at the end of the day? <laughs> no, I sleep. Except for I had a Vietnamese coffee for the first time mm -hmm. because I had to take a lactose pill because I'm lactose intolerant. Uh, and it's probably one of the better things I've ever tasted. Oh, Vietnamese coffee is yeah. amazing. It's a game changer. <gasps> yeah. Ooh, I'll have I to have to try that. Okay. I'll agree with that. Yeah. Wow. Um, do you say, well, I think I already know what you say, but I'm going to ask you, do you say soda pop or soda pop? Pop. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what is your favorite pop? Diet Dr. Pepper. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. And why? Uh, it just tastes like. It's weird. It tastes, it has like a distinct, like, it tastes like everything, but nothing. <laughs> uh, that's, that, that's true. That should be a good tagline for Dr. Pepper. <laughs> and once you hop on the diet train, you can't go back to like having sugary pops. Like sometimes cane sugar pops, maybe, but right. like yeah. diet everything, diet monster, diet, oh gosh. And one little fact here that's disgusting, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. Uh, how they can tell the pee levels in pools is by testing for aspartame because what? What? it doesn't break down in your body. So they can oh, tell. Oh, no. Serious? Yeah. Oh. oh, my God. <laughs> it's gross interesting. Gross interesting. Well, yeah. do you know that Diet Cola can actually remove rust? Yes. Yeah. So. It's bad for you. Another thing is too <laughs> That's all I, that I that's all I craved when I was pregnant with my son. Was wow. diet coke. Uh -huh. I like regular coke, but I've heard that can also I don't have yeah. it very often anymore, but I do. I I got to say I have cleaned some amazing <gasps> thrift store items using Coca-Cola. Oh, it's, it's, really, awesome. yeah. it's really awesome. Oh, yeah. No. They use it to clean up crime scenes. <laughs> oh, really? No. Yeah, blood. no. Oh. So I like my one Coke a day <laughs> and after I'm finished, we can clean up a crime. But the thing is the <laughs> guys in the pop are so strong. Yeah. 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 My, uh, my uncle's an ecologist. And when they were trying to figure out where streams would go and any, they just put like Gatorade cause it's actually like, a it's technically uh petroleum based, but it's food safe. And oh, so it doesn't wow. break down in the water. So, you can see where the streams go, like because it doesn't break down, but it's not going to harm the environment too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's I amazing! That oh, no, wow. jeez, Holy Jimmy Cricket. Now I got to ask George: Do you stick with like the name brand Dr Pepper, or are you a fan of those like off-brand dollar store versions of Diet Doctor? Uh, Doctor Smooth. Uh... <laughs> Uh, I name brand, name brand, but except for name brand when it comes to Dr. Pepper, but if it's ginger ale, sometimes I like, I like RC ginger ale. It has a different flavor except for Canada dry mostly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I was listening to a podcast one day. I can't remember which one it was, but they were, did this whole thing on Dr. Pepper and how many, there's like 57 ingredients. There's actually a Dr. Pepper museum that you can go to. I can't remember where it is, but it exists in the States. You so should go. If you ever travel, you should look at the Dr. <laughs> Pepper Museum. Of course it exists in the States. <laughs> <laughs> That's It's great. in Texas, I believe. And it's also Texas. like one of those weird official state drinks in Texas. Like they like, it oh. like outsells like Coca-Cola in Texas. It's like, it's a huge thing there. Yeah. Well, it's like I in Georgia. It is what it's like in Georgia how it any soda is just called a Coke. Right. Because right. it's from Georgia. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. but and Dr. Pepper in the Colorado Mountains uh -huh. in Breckenridge, they actually make hot Dr. Pepper. What is that? And you Ooh, drink you what? they 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 
bake it, they boil Dr. Pepper and you drink it like, oh, like temperature hot, like hot Dr. Like Pepper. Like a hot toddy? Like a hot toddy, non-alcoholic though. Yeah. I know. Huh. That's, but that's frightening. I mean, once you add heat to a Dr. Pepper and if it was off the market, Dr. Pepper, <laughs> we could yes. get for trouble. <laughs> Do you guys in Canada have big K cola? I don't think no. so. Now it no. must be a, 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 a states thing. Yeah, Big yeah. K Cola. They have um, Big K Doctor. That's all they say. There's no <laughs> Big K Doctor. So. Ooh, that, that sounds like a bit. Oh, gosh. Big K Doctor. <laughs> big K Doctor. Like a snake oil salesman. I the man is the Big K Doctor. I came in here. <laughs> <and> <laughs> <laughs> Calling Dr. K, Big K. <laughs> Paging Sounds like Big something K. you'd have in a warehouse. Dr. K. <laughs> um, now I'm going to add a, a bonus sixth question uh, to this, just because I know you've got quite a cooking background. Have you ever cooked with any pop or done any baking with any different kinds of uh, soda yes. beverages? Okay, yeah, so uh, this is a jerk chicken recipe I have. <laughs> and because... Coca-Cola is acidic. Yes. And it's sugary. It works both ways. It uh, works for your acid in your marinade. And it's so sugary that it gets the perfect amount of char when you put it on the, oh. the barbecue. Wow. Ooh. And also the guy who taught me that the reason they use it is because you keep in mind that refrigeration is more now, but in Jamaica, they didn't have refrigeration as much. So it was one of the things that they right. could use for their marinade that was safe, food safe, and it was around because Coca-Cola is literally everywhere. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, that's good. I'm gonna have to try that. <laughs> yeah, that sounds delicious. I mean, have you done the um the Coca-Cola chocolate cake? Yes. Okay. I've I've definitely done like taking a can of pop and a packaged cake mix just adding the pop and oh my so what it's we, fantastic what we did is my grandmother has a recipe from scratch where you use seven up oh so yeah it's a, like a seven up bundt cake oh. kind of thing so yeah. have you ever poached shrimp in seven up no right it's like a filipino thing they do that poaching it's really good wow poaching yeah. fish in seven up. i know that my oh, uh wow. my Grandma, maybe my mom too. They've done um, roast brisket, like you know, Jewish brisket with Coke. Yeah. That's Ooh. a big thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that yeah. all makes sense because it's like sugar and acid yeah. and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, that sounds. Amazing. And it's an exact. It's going to taste the same every time, right? Because they. Yeah. 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 The yeah. 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 That's true. That's oh, the one I'm thing that hungry. tastes the same everywhere: Coca Cola and a Big Mac. Like no matter where oh. you go. Oh. I'm really. Yeah. However, <laughs> if you see, I am the weird. The sort of loophole girl here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> However, sometimes if you get soda from a tap, yeah, or like sometimes it will taste different. Yes. Oh, yes. oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. at McDonald's because you have a special mix of Coca Cola that's different from regular Coca Cola. Right. That's formulated to blend with uh, as the ice melts and you get closer to the bottom, oh. it balances out. <gasps> It's yep. high Why do tech you know stuff. This? YouTube. <laughs> okay. These are the conspiracy holes that I go down. Like other people are like, that's oh. why it's so delicious. Yeah, it's specially oh, formulated. Coke, Coke, oh you know. my gosh! Look at McDonald's missing with the characters. You know, <laughs> McDonald's is actually closer to a Michelin star kitchen than most restaurants are. What? As really? As wow. Like, as far as like, uh, like I've, I've had friends that have worked in Michelin star kitchens and they said it, it was like working at McDonald's because everything has to be so precise and every, and right. like, and it has to be the same, like every time a McDonald's does that. Yeah. 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 I never thought about that. That's interesting. Yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. Now I would just like to see a Michelin star McDonald's appear. <laughs> oh. And a James Beard winner. Totally. <laughs> White glove service for your big Mac. That'd be awesome. Uh, George, where can friends find you on socials and come to live shows or purchase? Uh, live show. You can find me on, you, the best way to see my shows is to follow me on Instagram, Yukon's Black Comedian on Instagram. Uh, and, uh, I have a YouTube channel that I post to sometimes, uh, and, uh, yeah, and that's it. That sounds awesome. Well, friends, definitely give George a follow on the socials. 
see him in person. And if you're lucky enough to get him to make you have an error chutney, um, ask him nicely because it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happened because a friend of mine works for an organic farm. And when farmers like bring you something, they're like, I have three bags of habaneros for you. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh... <laughs> so you have to figure out a way to preserve them really quick. And then <laughs> that's what I did. It was awesome, as are you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today on Order Up. Thank you. That was fun. Is okay. Coke. And yes, I take, and no, I take no ice. We haven't started yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, uh, I am with my mom, Elizabeth Zemnikas. Uh, so we're going to ask again. Um, I'm, I'm surprised by this, but do you say pop or soda? I think, I, I think more soda. Really? Yeah. Interesting, because I say pop. Not soda. Okay. All right. What is your favorite soda? Coke. Regular Coke. <laughs> How often do you drink it? Um, I You're... used to do it too much, but now I'm drinking a flavored tea. Okay. And do you take ice in your Coke? No, I do not. Because you... I usually take it from the fridge so it is cold enough. There we go. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. <laughs> Order Up is hosted and produced by Matt Ardill, Mary Kennedy, Larry Hayne, Kelly Zemeckis, and original music is by Rebecca McDonald.